Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video, I hope it's going to be the first in a series where we can now use Space Engine. I, I've recently upgraded my PC quality, and so I can now use Space Engine, which is obviously a huge help to the channel. And I do intend to continue using the homemade graphics as well, um, but it should help the channel quite a lot to do some new videos. And I thought today, what we might do is take a look at some of Jupiter's lesser known moons, shall we say. The first one is, is this bizarre moon here of Almathea. The thing about Almathea is that obviously as so you can see it's not spherical. It's, it's only really a very small, very small moon. As you can see here, the diameter is just 133 kilometers. But Almathea is actually the fifth largest moon of Jupiter. I see here this beautiful view. Let's just speed up the time a little bit so that Jupiter's actually coming back into the sunlight. And you can, I love Space Engine, such a great program, isn't it? Because you can see things from all kinds of different angles. There's Almathea in orbit around a beautiful gas giant. And also what I like about Space Engine is there's a huge amount information here as well this is obviously talking about Jupiter at the moment number of moons 95 as we can see there on that list obviously um, in today's video we're not really going to be talking about the main moons the Gan what we call the Galilean moons Ganymede, Callisto, Io and Europa looking at some of these smaller ones so as we see we've seen the Amalfair that's an actual picture of, of the moon there so as you can imagine the space engine picture is fairly accurate isn't it uh, let's just go back on trust and it gives you a good picture. I wonder if the redness of Almathea is caused by an iron in, it, in its uh, composition. I don't know. Let's have a quick look. Let's just see about the composition of, of Almathea. It says here that this colour may be due to sulphur re originating from Io or some other non ice material. That's interesting. You know, Almathea's colour could be originating from Io. Uh, last thing about Amalfair is we, is we want to have a look at its orbit as well. Amalfair is actually inside Io, so it's closer to, to Jupiter in, in the orbital dynamics of the system. The next moon on the list is Himalaya, which is, again, is a very small moon, uh, but does rank as sixth largest in the Jovian system, which I, I've always thought of People tend to think of Jupiter having the, the larger moons of the system, but once you take away the first four, you really aren't left with very much at all. Himalaya, let's have a look, has a diameter of at least 140 kilometers. So again, let's have a look in the space engine version. Here's Himalaya, and let's just perhaps zoom out a little bit. And as you can see, it's barely spherical. It's a bit of an odd shape, isn't it, really? Himalaya. Um, and there's obviously the sun. It's not, and it's a wonderful program, isn't it? And look at the, the graphics there of, of him and air blocking out the glare of our beautiful star. And as you can see, it's actually probably quite a lot further out than, well, certainly a long way further out than Amalfair, as Jupiter's so small there. Tiny Jupiter, this one here is Callisto. So even further out than Callisto, Himalaya, I should say, I keep calling it Himalaya. So it's all be until period, it's 250 days, so it takes a huge amount of time to go around Jupiter. Let's just speed time up here a little bit. As we can see, here, here goes uh, Malia around the Jovian system. And it's, it's almost a year in Earth days, isn't it? It's all a bit spinning around, as you can see with a day of, of about nine hours. And you can see the four main Galilean moons there, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto, and obviously Io, with with Jupiter in the center there. Oh look, there's the Pleiades, look, that's interesting, isn't it? The Pleiades nebula there. I think we're gonna have some fun with space engines. Obviously Aldebaran uh, is, is next to the, the Pleiades, isn't there? So they've got a view of those two wonderful, wonderful celestial objects behind Himalaya. Let's have a look back towards Earth. What might we see? If we were, imagine if we were on a 
station, some perhaps on, on Himalaya, looking back towards the, the, that little dot there, barely visible at all, in fact, in the glare of the sun, that's Venus there, and, and Pollux, look how bright Pollux is, very bright in the space engine skies there, Castor of course, and uh, another bright one there, let's have a quick look, that one is Procyon, probably a very familiar star to, to our channel members, Procyon, and then looking back at the Jovian system again, so that's Himalaya, obviously I'm, I'm hoping to do more of these spent space engine type videos, I don't know if, if any of our folks found this channel via Anton Petrov's channel, I used to be an avid fan of Anton uh, back in the day, to be honest, he, I don't watch him as much as I used to. But his, his older videos, where he used to do space engine videos, um, I used to really love watching those, and I'm, I'm sort of hoping to reproduce them to an extent. Obviously, with my own slant on things, um, it's more a bit more star orientated than, than old Anton as well. But um, let's go back to our moons of Jupiter, and let's have a look at the next one. So, Himalaya and Seeb is the next one along the list. Strange looking place, got that huge crater there. Photoed by Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, it says, and also Galileo. Uh, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Obviously, Jupiter's been visited by quite a few space now. It's almost like quite a familiar place, really. It's quite strange to think that before the Pioneer probes, we'd not even visited Jupiter at all. Uh, does the space engine have its crater? Let's have a look. No, it doesn't seem to seem to have Thebes crater, does it? Which is a little bit disappointing. Maybe, maybe it's that actually, although that perhaps doesn't seem quite as impressive as as the actual photo. There's the beautiful Jupiter in the background. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. So Thebes obviously seems to be a lot closer in than um, Malia. Thebes is its orbital period there of 16 hours, so it's it's, it's very close into Jupiter which is sort of somewhere in the region 200,000 kilometers away. That's that red star there, that's a quick look, shall we? Betelgeuse, oh isn't that great? You have Betelgeuse behind Thebes, just crunched in there between Jupiter and Thebes. Presumably this one's original, is it? No, serious, of course, yeah. Get my uh, ups and downs mixed up. That's a serious, and there's Ritual there, of course. Ritual. And a few folks who are going to be able to guess what's the, what's this one on the bottom left of Orion here. You should know if you're big followers of this channel will probably know it's safe. And the one top, I think the one in the top right just behind here is, is actually hidden, isn't it? Uh, let's just see, have a look if you can find another one hidden behind Jupiter. I'm probably going to have to move out Jupiter. Which of course is Bellatrix, isn't it? There's the, the Orion claim, so Orion Quadrangle. So, yeah, there we are. I mean, basically, I'm just really using this episode as, a, as a, an episode getting used to Space Engine because I'm quite new to it myself. Uh, my old computer's just from handle it. I've got a new one now. So, hopefully, um, we'll be doing some more. Should we have, should we have a look at one more of uh, Jupiter's moons? Elara is the next one on the list. So, the eighth largest moon of Jupiter. Barely even image there, as we can see. So you can probably appreciate just how poor, really, the offering of, of Jupiter's moons is once you get past the Galileans, which I always think is, is perhaps it's not necessarily a bad thing for Jupiter, more a good thing for, more a good thing for Saturn and, and Uranus. So it looks like Elara is another one that's quite a long way out from Jupiter there, isn't it? Orbital period, no, 258 days, the orbit of Elara. It is again, we can see, and obviously Aldebaran, I presume there's that one there. Nice well, red star, yeah, Aldebaran. So there you are. Uh, what I was saying, basically, is the, the, the moons of Jupiter, perhaps we shouldn't really see them as, as being poor. More the, the moons of Uranus and, and the moons of Saturn come into more importance, shall we say, than, than perhaps they are often than looked at. Um, because of the size of the, of the Galilean moons, and there's Sirius again, Procyon, Venus, and yeah, so we're going back in towards the sun there. So, I think we'll wrap that up there. Um, I'd like to have a look at the moons of Uranus again with with um, Space Engine, and basically we're, we're enjoying the channel, lots of interesting things coming up. 
know, take care of yourselves and, and look after your friends and family as well. And we'll see you on the next one.